okay student in the last class already we have discussed about the euclid division lemma and their application now we'll go ahead with right. that one we are having now the fundamental theorem of arithmetic what is the fundamental theorem of arithmetic every composite number uniquely expressed as the product of its kinds or time factors is respective of their order means suppose you are having the 12 a composite number you know that composite number which will have the more than two factor one and the number itself so 12 can be expressed as the 2 into 2 into 3 Or three into two into two in any order means two squared into three. That is the prime factors on the two and three or two two and one three. So this no factor or this theorem is known as the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. The every composite number can be uniquely expressed as the product of its primes. Now using this prime factorization or the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Easily we can find out the ACM and LCM of two numbers. What is the ACM? Highest common factor of two numbers that can be expressed or written as the product of the common factors or common prime factors with their least power. Again, I am saying. That ACF is the product of the common prime factor with the least power, and LCM is the product of the factors, maybe common or may not be, product of the factors with their highest power. So this is known as the LCM and ACF, and you know that so you can find out also this huh? in the junior classes also you have done. and one more important result with the lcm and acf we are having that is what that is the product of two number is equal to the product of their acf and lcm means if you have the two numbers a and b so a into b is equal to acf of a and b multiplied by lcm of a and b so in this process by prime factorization or the ace by or the division method you can find out the acf and you can get the relation acf lcm and in this chapter you can do that show and with this one next one we'll go to the our simple number that is the rational number before that already we have learned this in the junior classes the total number system just we like to recall that one our number system will start from where starts from the natural number or the counting number natural number or counting number starts from what one that is 1 2 3 4 like this one. and with this natural number if we include zero then it becomes the whole number the whole number starts from zero that is 0 1 2 so on and with this one if we include the negative also then it will be known as the integer That is zero, one, two, three, four, so on. Again, minus one, minus two, minus three, so on. All these are known as the integers. And then after the integer, if we include the fractional part also, then it will be known as the rational number. So rational number we can define also the number which can be expressed in the form of p by q, where p and q are the integers and q not equal to zero. And the number which is present in real, but not be expressed in the rational form, that's like the p by q form. Then it will be known as the irrational number. Here we will discuss rational and irrational. This rational and irrational, including this one, the total number system is known as the real number. Now, rational numbers, if you want to express in the decimal form or decimal point of view. Rational number. If we divide them, it can be expressed in two form. One is the terminating decimal. Another one is the non-terminating and repeating decimal. Terminating decimal means p by q form. From there, if you want to decide which one will be the terminating decimal, without actual division, also we can find out that one. Find the prime factor of the q. 
if q that is the denominator can be expressed in the form of 2 to the power m into 5 to the power m where m and n are the whole number means denominator will have 2 and 5 are the prime factors maybe both or only one that is suppose 1 by 8 2 q that is only 2 is the prime factor that is also a terminating decimal or right. if you have the 1 by 5 that is also terminating decimal or if you have the suppose 3 by 10 or 3 by 20 that is also if you divide you will get the terminating because it will have 3 by 20 means 2 into 2 into 5 2 and 5 only that's why other than 2 and 5 if you have any other prime factor in its simplest form in the denominator then that number that rational number will be the repeating decimal or non terminating decimal just suppose you are having 1 by 3 simple one then if you divide then you will get 0 0.3331 or 0 0.3 recurring so this form you can get so just after seeing the number also we can get that is the rational form which form it will be and the number which cannot be expressed in this form that is p by q in its simplest form then that is known as the irrational number just say for example root 2 we can say root 2 by 1 but root 2 its value between 1 and 2 so two, root 2 is not the integer so root 2 is not the rational number so that by root pi that is also not the rational number someone can say pi is equal to 22 by 7 but remember pi is not equal to 22 by 7 it's pi is not having exact any particular value its nearest closest value is equal to 22 by 7 so 22 by 7 is the rational number but pi is not the rational number it is non terminating non repeating decimal so it will be the irrational so in that respect rational point of view say, we can express some irrational number also for example if you have to prove that very important proving also in the exam also usually it comes you have proved that root 3 is an irrational number for this type of proving any irrational part that's one usually we prove this one by the contradictory method you know contradictory method means what to be proved just opposite will suppose and ultimately what the result will be that is not possible for that one so from that contradiction we can say it is not possible so root 3 have to prove the irrational number so how can you prove that root 3 that is very important proving root 3 how can you prove that is irrational number <coughs> contradiction method we will do so first what we will do if possible language just listen if possible let root 3 be a rational number suppose that is root 3 is a rational number if root 3 is a rational number, then we can... Okay, sorry for the interruption. Now, uh, root 3 we have to prove as the irrational number. Let root 3 be a rational number. That means, let root 3 equal to P by Q. Where P and Q are the integers. And Q not equal to 0. And they are in the simplest form. Means p and q should not have any common factor other than 1 ok so root 3 b a rational number we have suppose so root 3 equal to p by q where p and q integer q not equal to 0 and third important point is that one j p and q should have no common factor other than 1 so if we square both sides then what you will get 3 equal to p square by q square or p square equal to 3 into q square so p square equal to 3 into q square that means clearly 3 is a factor of p square so since 3 is a factor of p square so automatically 3 is also a factor of p because that is the prime number so 3 is a factor of p so let p equal to multiple of 3 that means let p equal to 3 into m so p square equal to if you do that one you will get 9 m square so p square equal to 9 m square and earlier you have got p square equal to 3 q square so ultimately 3 q square equal to 9 m square or you can say q square equal to cancel by 3 3 m square so 
again 3 becomes the factor of q square. So 3 is a factor of q square. But 3 is also so what it will be? Factor of q. So now you are getting 3 is a factor of q. Earlier you have got 3 is a factor of p. So what happens? 3 becomes the common factor of p and q. So from third condition, that is p and q should not have any common factor. This fact contradicts that. So from this contradiction, we can say that our assumption was wrong. What we have assumed? That root 3 is a rational number. That is wrong. So what is proof? So root 3 is a irrational number. So in this way, any root number or that's the irrational part, we can prove that's by the contradiction. So you will follow this one, all these things and with this I will I'll give you one assignment, you will practice that one and after opening the school you must submit that one. Thank you.